1.7 million Filipinos use drugs. The most popular substance being abused in the country is still shabu. This is methamphetamine. Nagsimula ako nito, di si Shete ako. Pero wala pa naman kasi ako mapasok ng trabaho. Kaya ito pa lang yung pinagdidiskarte ako, pinagpangigta ako. Ang din binayaran, hahanapin ka nun. Papatayin ka nun nila. The Philippines' drug trade is worth an estimated $8.4 billion. Shabu, the local name for crystal meth, has for the last 20 years dominated the market. Its popularity as a stimulant, fueled by grueling work hours and a profound lack of opportunities, has made it the go-to drug for those looking to work longer hours to earn more money. But while the country's drug trade has traditionally been controlled by Chinese drug traffickers, earlier this year, police in Manila arrested Horacio Hernandez Herrera, an alleged third-in-command to Mexico's infamous Sinaloa cartel, one of the world's most powerful and deadly drug trafficking organizations. We spoke to Colonel Espino of the Philippine National Police to find out why Shabu was so popular and the challenges law enforcement face in the country. Hi, Colonel. Hi. How are you? Thank you for meeting us. What do you think it is about Shabu that's, that makes it so popular in the Philippines? It is cheap. Mm. It's very cheap. So it's quite easy to, yeah. to get it and find it. Yes. it and a... the particular drugs that they are selling, it is, can be afforded by ordinary people here. And what are the sort of main challenges for the PNP and the PDA when it comes to tackling drug trafficking organizations in the country? Well, uh, what we could say here is the drug trafficker really have a lot of money. Uh, they could buy the uh, law enforcer, they could reach up to the uh, judiciary, the prosecutors, and you must have really a, a strong moral uh, conviction right. not to be tempted with those uh, bribery. So what are the main methods that you use to target and prosecute these big foreign cartels? On the street level, we are being helped by our community who uh, help us pinpoint what particular barangay or places in the community are rampant in illegal drugs. With a staggering 92% of Manila's barangay neighborhoods estimated to be affected by Shabu, we met with an informant working with the Philippine DEA to find out how Shabu was affecting her neighborhood. Uh, in inaantay lang namin yung feed ng informant namin. Pagkatapos, saka kami gagawa ng aksyon. Kaya pag nasa area na tayo, pwede ipaba natin yung camera para hindi tayo maano, masunog sa trabaho. The confidential informant has now joined us in the back of the vehicle and we're going to drive into her neighbourhood where she's going to identify the locations where dealers are distributing shabu into the neighbourhood for the agents in the car so they can prepare their intelligence for an eventual raid. This house number 110, two posters in there, okay, there's another one poster in here. That one, number 197, the one with the green color on the left side the name is this one one of the big poster in here so you've been into these houses yes. and you've seen them handle drugs or deal yes. drugs how long have you been an informant for the for the pdea just uh, recently because i cannot take anymore i can't take anymore so just to keep silent no i wanted them to be <laughs> To be in arrested, jail, yeah. yes, I wanted, I wanted them to be arrested and put in jail. Why do you think Shabu is so popular in Manila and your district here? We have a very low punishment. So, gangs don't fear the yes. police? Yes, the gangs don't fear. Those uh, drug peddlers don't fear because of the justice, justices. If the death penalty should come back in our uh, justice system, I think, the best. 
So are you worried for your safety by doing this? Yes, of course. I'm very much worried with my safety. My whole family is uh, living in this area. Have you got a weapon to protect yourself at home? I have my weapon at home with a license. Do the pushers have weapons? Of course. With a quarter of Filipinos living in poverty, Shabu's affordability and accessibility have made it the drug of choice, with open abuse becoming the norm in Manila's poorer areas. We met with one user to find out how he got into Shabu. JR, how old are you and was the first time you took Shabu? I started this at 18 years old, now I'm 19 in November. Ang una nagpa-try sa akin nito, pinsan ko, eh, nabuyo lang kasi ako mi. Eh. Nagkayayaan, ayoko sumama niyon. Yung sumama ako, yung sumama na lahat yun, sumama na rin ako. Tayo na anit ko yan, hay na hay na, nawala yung lasing ko. So do a lot of people that use it get into dealing shabu to pay for their habit? Oh, yung iba kailangan ng pera, yung iba makatira lang, ganun, okay na sa nila. Kasi yung iba naman, talagang magnanakaw na, ganun, makatira lang. Pero wala pa naman kasi ako mapasokan ng trabaho, kaya ito pa lang yung pinagdidiskarte ako, pinagpangita ako. What do your parents think of you using Shabu? Oo, oh, sa ngayon alam na. Kasi yung father ko, patay na. Yung mother ko, boy nga. Pero parang wala namang intindi sa amin. Parang simula yung namatay yung tatay ko, wala na. Hindi na kami intindi. Naging parang lokal-lokal na rin. Oo, galit ako. Galit ako sa sarili ko. Parang, kasi hindi naman tama yung ganun talaga eh. JR took us to meet with some of his friends who've been smoking shabu for over 20 years. Hi guys. Kamusta? Okay na. Hindi, bigyan bangko, bangko, bigyan bangko. So this is uh, 2,400 pesos worth, which would last these guys quite a long time. Russ, why do you think Shabu is so popular? Dahil kapag nakatikim ka nito, parang gusto mo na siya eh. Ito ang nakagustuhan ng Pilipino dito sa amin. Ito yan, pag nakahit-hit ka yan, mga dalawang tatlong oras ang tama niyan. Tapos pag maghahanap ka na naman. So, when you take a hit of Shabu, how does it make you feel? Yung magangang pakiramdam mo, yung, mara yung marami kang magandang iniisip, do, do a lot of people that use Shabu also then get into selling it to try and feed their habit? Oh, kasi ganun din yung nangyari sa akin. Nagbenta rin ako na ito eh. Kasi ito karamihan talaga pinauutang nila ito eh. Pinakukunsign ba? Pinauutang para ibenta mo. Ang hindi mo binayaran, wala. Hahanapin ka nun. Papatayin ka nun nila. Uh, so it's pretty swearingly hot in there. And there's a lot of uh, shabby smoke in there, so worried I might have a bit of a contact high. But from what they were telling us, you know, Russ has been doing this for 20 years. Once you're smoking the shabu, you're kind of locked in for a very long time. There's not really many other opportunities for people to get help to get off it. it sounds like a very dangerous drug that these guys are clearly struggling with. Cheap and highly addictive, using and dealing shabu clearly has its risks. We managed to gain access to one small-scale operation typical to Manila to find out how their setup worked. So, Joaquin, can you tell me what you're doing here? We are trying to give to the people who have a bulto, a rump, and we are trying to get to the people who are trying to get to the people who are trying to how much is here on the table right now? Uh, 300,000. You're very well aware of the effects that Shabu has on people and the stranglehold it can have on their lives. How does that make you feel being involved in this business? Do you want to expand your operation to other barangays? Are you pretty happy with the territory you currently control? 
Siguro sa ngayon, okay na yung ganito. Dahil pagka nag-interest pa kami ng ibang lugar, eh, sigurado patay na naman yan. And you're ready to kill to protect your business? Nangyayari na lang yun. <laughs> Siyempre. Eh. <laughs> Nagawa na talaga naman para wag ma... Hindi po pwedeng... Kasi kung ganun kami gagawa ka ganun. Hindi ganun kadali. Hindi ganun kadali para nakuha namin yung ganitong lugar. So in January, we saw a Mexican Sinaloa cartel member arrested in Manila carrying a large amount of shabu. Have you seen any Mexican involvement in the shabu trade over the years? Talagang galing sa China yung ano. Talagang mga imported yung mga ano. Ngayon, sa ngayon, yung mga dito na ginagawa. Pag tumutun na rito, na ipabigay na nila, wala na sila pakailan ng mga anta. Alam na, mga mga bibigat din talaga yun. Kaya lang, hindi pa masyado sila nakaka... An overwhelming 89% of narcotic arrests in Manila this year were shabu related, creating fierce competition amongst local gangs. The gang members took us to some scrubland outside the capital to test their weapons and tell us just how dangerous the trade has become. So, Joaquin, can you tell me uh, what are these weapons and why you guys have to, to use them in the business that you're in? Dahil may mga ibang mga pumapasok na grupo sa mga teritoryo namin. Eh, kailangan namin ng ganitong mga armas dahil para protection din sa amin. Has the business over time, uh, as Shabu's become more popular, become more risky? Mas nagiging delikado dahil uh, alam nilang marami ng pera ang usapan doon eh. Do you think you've ever killed anyone have it, when you've had to use these weapons to defend your barangay? Do the police often try and break up your operation? Are the police aware of what's going on? They're aware of who controls which areas, who controls what kind of product? To find out more about the shifting relationships between foreign drug syndicates, we met with Chief Inspector Murder Gear of the Anti-Illegal Drug Special Operations Task Force, who headed up this year's arrest to suspected Sinaloa member, Horacio Hernandez Herrera. Based on our experiences, the syndicates operating in the country are the, the Chinese syndicates and now the Mexican Sinaloa drug cartel that started to operate in the country. Uh, but lately, we have observed the local Chinese drug syndicates have uh, cooperated or uh, worked together with the Mexican Sinaloan drug cartel. And how does that relationship work exactly? The, based on the report, the, the, the working relationship between the Mexican Sinaloan and the local Chinese uh, syndicates is on, more on distribution of the finished product coming from the Mexico. So Mexico delivers finished meth or shabu to the Chinese who then import it into the country? That's it, yes. And could you tell me what are the main ports of entry and how are they able to smuggle so much in without being noticed? The drugs coming from abroad enters through the customs and of course the, the vast shoreline of the Philippines. The drugs are dropped from the open sea waters and the oceans and pick up by the some local cohorts of the syndicate. And what do you think it is about the Philippines that is so attractive to these foreign cartels? The perceived corruption among the pillars of the criminal justice system. One mayor was arrested transporting hundreds of kilograms of meth using the local ambulance of the municipality. Wow. So a lot of, a lot of sort of politicians use drug money to fund their campaigns. We believe that those arrested government officials, elected and appointed, a lot, hundreds, two hundreds, we believe that the drug money could be used this coming election. Corruption appeared to be at every level, but to see just how true these claims were, 
we reached out to a former member of the Philippine National Police to talk about his experience with bribery and corruption within the police force. How long were you in the police force and what departments did you work in? I entered in the police service since 1984 up to 2014. Napakaraming uh, corruption ngayon. Observasyon ko ngayon, sa 100 uh, cops, siguro mga 10 na lang yung talagang uh, mabait, mabait. And how did it make you feel knowing that your work was often compromised by corruption? Mata na lang akong uh, tinitingnan yung mga ginagawa ng mga kasamahan ko. At any time during your service, did you ever take a bribe? Oh, nakatanggap din ako pero hindi naman malaki ano lang ibigay din ng mga kasamahan ko abotan ako ng for the boys ng mga kasama ko oh, tanggap ko na rin kasi magsasalita ka eh, ba, uh, nasa ano ka na tatapong ka na sa kangkungan o sa alimbawa sa tapo na ng patay ganun. Delikado. So we're driving around Tondo waiting for a phone call from one of the delivery guys and his job is to deliver larger amounts of shabu to a number of street level dealers who will then sell on the shabu to the users in the district. Joseph, how much shabu are you carrying on you right now and how much is it worth? It's about 9 grams. About 7,000. Have you seen over the past couple of years like an increase in demand for shabu? Yes, there's a lot. They uh, We're now going to follow Joseph on his bike as he delivers the shabu to two of the street level dealers. So given the high demand for shabu, Joseph has to make two of these runs every single day. So he's just dropped off some to this guy. Where the Philippines had fallen short in creating opportunities for its poorest, Shabu was picking up the slack, being it turning the unemployed into dealers or enabling users to work even longer hours. The Sinaloa cartel, working alongside the well-established Chinese gangs, sets a dangerous precedent, one that the corruption within the police and government will make so much harder to tackle, compounding the misery for those plagued by the drug. <laughs> 